Hello everyone! Good day everyone! We are well, safe and healthy. You don't need to worry about. We are at Bocas del Toro, Panama at Safe Harbor. We've been out of reach because we literally have been in the middle of nowhere in the sea. And that's the reason you haven't heard about us. Mm. Now, this is a special release video. It doesn't go in order with the usual blog, so please try not to get confused. It'll be a number of videos showing what has happened to us over the last 70 days or so. It's an update. Yeah, it's an update. Now, um, it begins with the Cuban military saying, you, you have to, to go now. now. But in actual fact, we checked out of Cuba 24 days previously, and that was our last supplies. Now, we didn't fill up with fuel or water. Uh, we tried to, uh, and um, tin goods and stuff like that. It's, in Cuba, it's problematic. But we got what we got, and uh, we knew Jamaica was only two days ago. But then the coronavirus hit us, or didn't hit us. Well, came like into the, play. Yeah, came into play. And we were really caught out because before we could, we got kicked out of uh, we got kicked out of Cuba. But before we could get into Jamaica, everything was in lockdown, and um, well, we were sort of stuck. And we were kind of uh, ignorant about it because we didn't have any communication with no one. Yeah. So we knew nothing. We were caught by surprise. And we because this is unprecedented, and we thought, well, look. Yeah, okay, we heard Jamaica was locked down. We'll just head east because we've got this dream of seeing the Eastern Caribbean. So we'll just, well, eventually, we're going to yeah, get let we in. Got, we're going to get let in somewhere. Well, how wrong we were. Just getting escorted out of Cuba. So Peter went and tried to climb the, apparently, lighthouse and I just stayed picking up some shells and when I was finishing, Peter just came fresh, fresh, fresh! There's a big boat there, it looks like it's from the military and we were, he was scared because he was playing the drone and supposedly you're not allowed so we would get in big uh, trouble Plus, we already had checked out of the country How many weeks ago? Uh, three? Three weeks ago, I think we wanted to take our time uh, going towards Jamaica, but not as long as we're doing it. Uh, we're kind of being stuck because all the borders are closed, so they're probably not going to allow us to get in Jamaica, but we just got kicked out of the country right now. They said just uh, raise anchor and get out of the country. We're going to escort you until you're out of uh, Cuban waters. And if we see you again, we're going to apply you sanctions. Well, we're going to be in trouble, so we don't know what to do. We got no wind, that's for sure. And the matter is, just gave us uh, a broke down yesterday. Yesterday, gave us grip. We're gonna try to enter in Jamaica if they don't allow us. Well, at least see which country they might say that might accept us. You gotta look on the bright side. It's a beautiful day to get kicked out. Just beautiful. I mean, the water is stunning. We could have asked for a little bit more breeze. I'm just trying to work out where to go. Because Jamaica, we don't know where they're going to close. Well, we think they've closed the borders. I just... He's going on? Yeah. I just uh, texted my brother. Uh, see if he replies asking news about Jamaica and Dominican Republic to see if we can get in. Otherwise, we're just going to stay adrift. <laughs> Well, I don't want to stay adrift. I, I'm looking for some reef. Now, I know there's reefs south of Jamaica. If we get good weather, I can get in and we can anchor there. And um, But if we get bad weather, we're sort of stuffed. See, if this was Australia, I'd be able to hide everywhere because it's, Australia's coastline's like a billion kilometres long. Yeah, convict country. Charming. Yeah, so uh, I'm looking on the bright side. we got extra three weeks to stay in Cuba so it's all good except for the wind oh we're down to 1.5 uh -huh. there was wind that night there is always a good nor'easter at this time of year Margarita I put her to sleep and um, I wanted to 
take over the sailing because I wanted to delicately parallel the whole coast of Cuba within the, the, their uh, international limit so I could take advantage of the, um, of the calm, of the lee. I've got an idea now because we don't quite know what the situation is with the coronavirus um, with it um, I think we heard it was 15 days 15 days is up Monday or Sunday or Monday for us now we're coming in a day that day or a day earlier but we've heard that um, Margaret has been texting her brother through the Garmin thing We've heard that um, they can prolong it. Now, if they prolong it, I don't want to sit in harbour. That's what he said. He sent a message. They have the obligation, or sorry, they have the right to ask you to quarantine yourself for 14 days and not leave the boat. So uh, I'm thinking it's only three days to uh, Dominican Republic. And if there's a chance they're going to do the quarantine, well, might as well just be at sea anyway, because I'm going to be at sea, well, I'm just going to be in a calm anchorage. Drifting to Cuba, they'll be mightily impressed. But we're just going to wait for the wind tonight. It's going to come through in about five to seven hours, and we don't have enough fuel. What's wrong with this picture, people? Sun's risen about an hour or two ago. That's east. Well, sorry, that's north of east, just slightly. The wind's actually coming from that direction, which is exactly the direction we're trying to aim for. The southwest tip of Haiti is there. Now, so why are we doing this when we ought to be on a reach or a broad reach with beautiful 15 to 25 knot winds? Well, uh, how do I explain this? In the two months we've been in Cuba, the normal diurnal pattern, apart from whether, when a northerly cold front comes through, which disrupts it, turns it south, but when there's no cold front, without fail, you can set your clock to this. At midnight, or close to midnight, the wind will come through anywhere between 15 and 25 knots, sometimes up to 30 knots. It'll be east nor east. It'll blow its tits off until anything from mid-morning to early afternoon. Then it starts to veer east, and then it can either go southeast under 10, or it can just go glass out. And then it all happens all over again. Come midnight, bang, 15 to 25 knots, and you can you could you could bet on it. Well, I set myself up south of Cuba, ready for this east northeast. It didn't come. I mean, we didn't even have any sail up. We drifted for 12 miles. We wasted 12 hours. Like, we should have done 100 miles in that stretch. We're low on fuel. We've got 8 to 12, I'm sorry, 8 to 20 hours. I don't know exactly how much because we don't have a fuel gun. But from calculations, it's about 8 to 20 hours. So I'm saving that. We're not even charging the battery. Hopefully, we get enough sun to charge the batteries and the wind generator will. Well, the wind generator needs 25 knots to do anything. You've got to look on the bright side. It's not raining. Well, actually, we could do with rain. It's not a storm, and it's not a huge wave. So I should just shut the hell up and just uh, enjoy myself. nightmares for some people tonight.
water, water everywhere and nobody around except for one really, really big brown booby who sort of hovered there and did the largest poo I've ever seen a booby do, which correspondingly broke up into two bits. And I thought, oh, here goes, this is going to be a piece of luck. Because in Italy, if you get shat on, it's good luck. Missed here and went straight on the solar panels. Now, because we're really, really low on power, well, we need all the solar we can get. So, and these power, these solar panels are the ones that if you block off a small section, the whole thing, you lose almost, uh, almost 100% of the power. You like 95% of the power is lost. So, I'm just going to have to go clean that. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble tonight. Once a year. Every day it glass not that this is glassy, but it's down to two knots. We've got any anywhere between eleven thirty and two thirty from eleven thirty AM or two thirty PM every day till close to midnight. There's no wind. So and we we don't have the fuel. The Haitian border is only 15 miles that way and we are uh, we are drifting and I don't want to have anything to do with Haiti and Margarita as well so and there's nothing we can do it's crazy where we're heading Dominican Republic has closed it for another three weeks but what I'm going to try and do is on this side, uh, on the western, southwestern side of Dominican Republic, there's this little bay that there's no development, no road. So we're going to try and just wait out the three weeks there, or at least charge the batteries and, well, wait for some decent wind so we can actually do it. Uh, because it's, it's just ridiculous. I mean, we might be able to get away with it. There may not be a Coast Guard um, post there. What else are we going to do? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Now this is a flat ocean. But every 10 or 20 minutes or so, the boat can go up to 20 degrees either side of vertical. And sometimes more. The marbles just keep rattling around, people, and it's hard to sleep. Drifting live. No wind, no fun. Boom, 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 boom. Because we're really, really low on diesel, we don't want to, um, well, let's not waste it, but use it until it's really, really necessary here without having any risk. But we're running low of water and we don't have fresh stuff anymore. We're on beans, rice and cans of fruit and that's it. Sailing life, it's all fun and games. So in our seven hours, I did midnight till four margarita, sorry, the lovely margarita did four till seven. We made eight miles east. The wind's currently dropping. We're doing about three and a half knots. At least we're sort of going a little bit east, but I know it's gonna happen. It's gonna die off. 
and then in 12 hours we're going to drift back 12 nautical miles. Um, so we're trying to make as much uh, forward east as possible. So in hindsight, what I think I should have done is um, there's a little island or a few islands just south southwest of the eastern tip of Jamaica. Uh, hopefully there's no, no one there. And we could have just hung there until all this nonsense is blown over. Um, but, I mean, we had good wind in the forecast. I don't mind if it's from the east. I know it's going to be from the east because it's the trade wind. But so long as we can do some... Because usually during the day, it's either east southwest, well, east northeast, and it goes to east southwest. So you've got a bit of variance. So you can plan your manoeuvres so you don't... Um, you can be quite efficient. You can actually go east quite well. But we haven't been able to plan because the wind is all over the place and it just dies on us. So, having said that, we should have stayed in Jamaica, but now that we've made, we're almost halfway, well, we're past halfway, I'm a bit reluctant to um, give up all that east because we're gonna have to make it up. I'll make it up uh, later. And we have to get in soon because our batteries are running down. We can't, I can't run the motor to charge the batteries. Um, and we're not topping up the batteries fully during the day because our solar, even though I cleaned it, is not giving us enough. So gradually the, the, the batteries are getting lower and lower. So, I mean, we might even be forced, you know, like in a couple more days, I mean, it's 120 miles to go to get to that first anchorage. I mean, the way we're going, it's gonna take another week. I had had enough of not knowing exactly what was in the tank, so I had to have a look. We don't have a fuel gauge, so all of the um, fuel consumption is done by maths, calculations. Okay, you can't just um, put a dipstick and do an ordinary percentage because it's a uh, truncated pyramidal section on the bottom with another sort of a truncated pyramidal, set, a pyramidal section for about 150 mil and then it's got a rectangular uh, section on top so you got to do the calculation the calculations that I had um, was saying that I had eight hours of um, fuel left which is about 16 litres from what I've seen in there, it looks 20-ish, 20 litres, okay? But now we're gonna work it out. Which is about 26 litres. So we've got actually 13 hours. Okay, copy that. So I'm stuck if I go. All right, look, much obliged. We'll, we'll soldier on. We keep on going east. Um, and um, if we get any trouble, we'll get back to you. What's this? This is crazy. We're actually doing four knots. Well, three and a half, but I'm rounding up. Makes me feel better. So we're actually heading sort of in the right direction. Believe it or not, it's a northwesterly. I mean, it's not in the forecast. It's all local effects, but I know it's going to happen. I'm not stupid. Well, let's not go into that. Um, it's going to go northeast, then east northeast, and then east. So it's going to, by the end of the day, we're going to be like doing probably one mile east per hour, if that, because it's going to drop. So it's okay at the moment. It's not too bad. I just got off the um, HF um, radio at, on 8104, and apparently the trouble is all the information I'm getting is uh, I believe it's this, I believe it's that. There's no one that knows exactly what's going on. He says, I believe everything in the Caribbean is locked down. Well, I don't want to hang in some stinky harbour for three weeks or two weeks quarantine. Anyway, uh, yeah, we already dropped half a knot. We're probably at three knots. I'm still rounding up to four people. Wind's already started to go east, south, east, so, and it's dying. We're only doing 1.8 knots, but 1.8 knots is better than no knots. We're going backwards, drifting, uh, without any sail, and then the boat goes beam onto the swell, and it's just a nightmare. Still got 120 miles. 
well, maybe 118 miles now. Rocking around like a fart in a pickle bottle. Wait for me! Wait for me! Oh bugger, you guys are just too slow. So what do we do to stop us from going crazy or killing each other? Well, we play games. Oh, and we play this game. And board games. We eat and we discuss the speed. One and a half knots, people. Okay. As you can see, the wind is pumping. Our destination is that way. Again, we've got four and a half knots. We're doing about one and a half to two knots. Um, we're 60 mile away now. Hopefully we're gonna be there in two days time. Who knows, it might be a miracle tonight. Maybe we might get a breeze. But it's, uh, it's unbelievably frustrating. I saw a squall line coming and I went, oh, wind, wind. And when it hit, it wasn't, well, it wasn't 15 to 20, it was eight to 10, but that doesn't matter. Close hold, I could bring that up to 12. And uh, we were actually moving at five knots. So what are we now? We're five hours later, just under five hours later. And we're so much closer. I think I'm about, I'm about 15 to 20 mile out. The wind is now, well, apparent. The wind is about nine, so it's about six, six and a half. And we're doing, wow, we're doing four knots. Well, there must be a current. It must be sweeping around the cape and coming up and creating a big um, eddy current. So it's all looking good. It's, uh, um, the long wait is over. Oh, you don't know how tedious it is. I can make out land over there, so it must be about 15 mile away. Just bloody awesome. This sailing with no wind, oh, far out, it's the most tedious thing ever. And then we got one more tack and hopefully we'll be in. Oh, I mean, it's still 15 mile. It looks like it's dying. You know, it might still be. I mean, I hope it's not one more day. I just need to get in and get a fish and just relax and get some sleep. Haven't had too much luck with the fishing by rods. Um, our fishing gear is pretty poor. As you can see, it's just a sinker with a tiny little squid thing. Uh, I've got to make them a bit more believable to the fish, a bit more real. So um, I better put some effort into that because uh, if I do the Pacific, well, I need to catch fish. This is our last tag before we're going in. The misery ends. Um, until we get there. Oh, we're, we're good. We've got a cape to get past. We had to come down south because I just discovered there's a town about seven miles north of where we're going to anchor and so I didn't want to get too close so we're going to go around and then up and sneak in.
it says Alcoa. Now Alcoa in Australia is a big aluminium firm, so maybe they've got aluminium here. I don't know if they've got radar or whatever. I just want to avoid it and sneak in on the coast and get in because we need a rest. We need to recharge the batteries and I need to sleep. Welcome to the Bay of Eagles. It was awesome with magnificent cliffs dropping into crystal clear water and white sandy beaches. I had a really good feeling about this place and I was looking forward to hiding out here for the next three weeks. Can we get a sailboat chasing down the sunset as we float round and round the globe? Salty air and balmy nights guided only by the lights above. Here we are, Dominican Republic. such a relief to drop anchor you have no idea how exhausted like, we were you have no idea this was not a uh, a fight against storm huge waves tempest this was uh, this was far far more tedious it was unbelievably bad being on a boat that you couldn't engage the motor we had no pressure in the sails we were rocking backwards and forwards. No wings. And finally, we get to this beautiful harbour. There's no one around. There's no, there's no houses. There's no roads. There's a beautiful white beach without footprints on it. It's beautiful clear water. It was unbelievable. I could really see ourselves, you know, doing the quarantine here for three weeks and just hiding out. We thought this is our piece of heaven. No yeah. one is going to bother us here. This is... Yeah. Far, far away from yeah, we, any town. Yeah. We thought, this is great. We swam naked. We ran along the beach. We didn't film any of this because, hey, we had three weeks. Well, it didn't turn out like that. But you'll have to watch next week's video.